This is Sharon Mornholt with Innovative Property Solutions in the Louisville Gauss Real Estate blog, and I'm really happy to have my friend Carrie Buck with me today. Hi, Carrie. Hey, Sharon. How are you? I'm good, good. Uh, now, we talked last April for uh, part of my Escaping the 9 to 5 series um, about your desire to leave your job, to get out of the rat race, quit your 9 to 5, and you had a goal at that time, back in April, of being finished in December of this year, December 2012. Well, as you and I know, what actually happened is you were out of your job in June of 2012. Um, And while it probably wasn't the way you envisioned doing it, um, you put it out there to the universe, and the universe has a way of handing you presents. So I like to call them presents. So I'll let you update everybody on, uh, you can just tell them how you, um, how it all came down. Okay. Uh, I believe last time when we talked, I, I told everybody that I asked my boss if I can go part-time. Did I say mm-hmm. that on the last call? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> I asked her if I could go part-time, and she's really cool. I mean, she's she was awesome, very supportive. I went I went part-time, I think, I think I went part-time the end of April. I think it was the end of April I went part-time. Mm-hmm. It was either end of April or beginning of it. Well, no. No, the end of the end of March or the beginning of April is when I went part time. Okay, that makes sense. So I was part time. Everything was great. You know, I had no issues. You know, everything was working out good. Then May 18th ish, I think, uh, my boss said, "I I need to talk to you for a minute." Oh. I'm like, what? I'm like, okay, no problem. You know, I don't I don't care. I'm like, life is great for me mm-hmm. at this point because I'm working part time. I'm really building our my ATM course. My ATM mm-hmm. business blueprint. I'm really working on our real estate. I mean, I'm doing everything mm-hmm. I want to do, you know. So I'm like, okay, what do you want to talk about? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and she's like, <laughs> she's like, well, I know this probably isn't good timing, but we need you to come back full time. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, oh. Mm. <laughs> and she's like, you know, there's just things that you know, Gordon, who's the the owner of the company, you know, wants wants you to do that he's doing now, but he wants you to do it. Mm-hmm. And a side note, the funny thing is when I was full time, he never wanted me to do it. Oh my. Right. I know, right? Mm-hmm. So anyways, she's like, so we want to know if you can come full time. And if you can't come back full time, Gordon said we have to look for somebody full time. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I'll give you the weekend, you know, talk to Kathy about it, talk it over and, mm-hmm. you know, let, let me know. So of course I went, I went home, I told Kathy about it and I said, you know, this is, what they asked me today, and she's like, well, you know, we've been making so much progress, I, I don't want to go backwards, mm-hmm. plus Joe, who's my stepson, he's 11, he's 11, well, he's 12 now, Joe's getting ready to get out of school for the summer, she says, I really was counting on you to watch him over the summer, you know, mm-hmm. and you know, he's 12, not that I have to watch him every step of the way, but you know what right. I mean. She said, I was counting on you for to be home with him when you were part-time and to be home with him all mm-hmm. summer, and she says, well, you know what? Ask them if they could wait till September. So I'm like, okay, well, what if they say, you know, no, we can't wait till September. You know, you have to do it now or you're fired. Yeah. So I, I asked Kathy that, and she says, well, then you're fired. Mm-hmm. I was like, really? She's mm-hmm. like, yeah, we're making too much progress. I don't want to stop now. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right. So I went back Monday and told my boss that, and she's like, no, we can't wait till September. You know, we need somebody now. I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, I understand. So she didn't really say much about it. You know, that was just the end of the conversation. Then mm-hmm. I think, like, by the weekend, she had told me she had found somebody that wanted to work the job. And she asked if I would train the girl. And I was like, yeah, I don't care. I mean, my boss and I, we just got along really well, you know. And she's very supportive. So I said, yeah, I'll train her for you. So I trained the girl, and June 8th was my last day at my job. Wow. You know, and the thing I want people to understand is that you were able to really do this because you already had your uh, side business, your ATM business going, and you had some income, some passive income coming in from that. Absolutely, yeah. The, 
I mean, the ATM business itself has been huge, plus my ATM business blueprint course helps as well. Mm -hmm. But the the ATM business itself, the passive income that we get from that is what, I guess, let us feel more comfortable with me not having Mm -hmm. a job, if you will, you know, and being able to take a little leap. (laughs) Yeah, it didn't work out exactly the way you planned it, but it worked out nonetheless. Um, yeah, and like you said, it was like the universe was listening, saying, if yeah. you're not going to do this, I'm going to do it for you. Yeah, and I, I you, you know, I'd actually know somebody else that had almost the identical situation happen to them. And uh, sometimes when you put it out there, the solution comes, and it they tell you just put it out there and don't think about the solution. So I think that's exactly right. what happened. So um, when you first left your job, before you were juggling your, your full-time job, and I know sometimes you were working late in the evenings and you're trying to get in all of you, you um, wrote your course during that time and you're working on your ATM business. So you, I know that you were kind of going all directions all the time. And all of a sudden now you've got these hours nine to five. So did you sit down in the beginning and say, okay, this is what I'm going to do? Did you try to get a schedule or a plan when you uh, first found yourself, you know, where you didn't have to go to your job? I did. I did because when I first went part-time, I I realized I had all this extra time, so I came up with a plan. So obviously when I'm full-time, you know, I have way more time, so I had to come up with a schedule for myself. So I sat down and kind of figured out what I wanted to concentrate on, you know, during – you know, my hours, which for me is nine to five. You know, if Kathy's not home at that point, I'll, I'll keep working. But um, I, I made a, a point that when I'm done working and Kathy's home, you know, it's family time. I'm done working. Mm-hmm. You know, even on the weekends, I try not to work anymore. Now, mm-hmm. I mean, I got 40 hours during the week to do it. I don't I don't need to do it 24 hours a day anymore, you know. But, yeah, yeah I did come up with a schedule for myself. I mean, that's I'm the type of person I need that. I know that I need that. You know, so, so you, you didn't see. have a lot of trouble finding your focus then when you, or did you have some problems? A lot of entrepreneurs have trouble kind of getting their focus when they see they've got all those hours they didn't have before. Well, I'm not saying that I was perfect at it. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I had some focus issues, especially on Mondays, because Mondays Kathy works from home too. Okay. So when we're both home, we tend to, you know, do, you know, clean up or, you know, go fill ATMs, whereas if she's not here, I mean, I I just concentrate fully on what I need to do to grow our businesses, and she'll fill ATMs after work or after I'm done here, I'll fill ATMs if I have to. So my my, probably my biggest lack of focus days are on Mondays, but I'm I'm getting a little bit better at Mondays as well. Well, you kind of got two things going on here. I mean, you've got your your ATM business and the the things like filling your machines and although that's pretty much runs itself I, I think other than oh, yeah, absolutely fast. so you're then uh, one thing you were able to amp up your online business you're able to amp up um, teaching other people how to do the business spend more time on getting the word out about your course and mm-hmm. so you I think it's just allowed a lot of other good things to happen to you so um I know we've talked about some of these things, but what are some of the opportunities that have come your way since you've just kind of been ready for them? Well, I've done a couple of interviews already with folks because I have time. It was with Entrepreneur Entrepreneur Radio, Entrepreneur Podcast, E-Podcast, Entrepreneur Radio, something something like that. I forget what it's called. I'm sorry. Um, I'm also working on doing an interview with Women's Entrepreneur Headquarters, So I've been doing that kind of stuff. I'm reaching out to all kinds of people trying to get interviews, do interviews like this, Mm -hmm. um, do even live speaking events. Mm -hmm. And in, I don't want to say, I don't want to say officially yet, but late November to December of this year, um, 99.999% sure that I'm going to be doing a speaking uh, engagement for a pretty big deal guy that, you know, once I announce it, most people will be like, Oh, damn, I know him. (laughs) So I don't want to say it yet because everything is leading to, you know, pointing that I'm getting, I'm going to speak because I just did a teleseminar for his people last month, but I haven't gotten the official invite yet. But it's a pretty big deal. I know you know who it is. It's a pretty big deal once you, it's not a pretty pretty big deal. It's a really big deal. It is a really big deal, but I don't, I don't want to jinx myself, but you know, some people are like, you're just, you know, it, 
it's going to be. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I know everything's pointing that way, but I went for the official invite. So I just did a teleseminar for a really big guy last month. Most likely I'm going to be doing a speaking engagement for him um, the end of this year. I just went to Brendan Burchard's High Performance Academy last month, which was awesome, awesome, awesome. And next month I'm going to his world's greatest speaker training just so I can, you know, be a better speaker, you know, because I, I love speaking to people and teaching people about how they can have enough passive income in their, in their life where they don't have to work their nine to five. They don't have to work a job that they don't really care about that much, you know. I'm sure that you would rather spend 40 hours plus a week with your family and loved ones than with your coworkers. Most people don't know that that is actually a reality. So I like getting out there teaching people, whether it's on video, whether it's on interviews like this, whether it's on the stage, whatever. So I, I want to get better at speaking. So there's a lot of stuff I got going on. Well, you do. that, And a lot of those things you would not have been able to take advantage of had you not had your passive income and, and your freedom from your job. Um, Absolutely. Your, your bosses aren't always, while they're... Rooting for you a certain degree, not to the degree that they just let you off all the time. Exactly. So um, exactly. we talked about uh, the thing that I love about the ATM business is the whole passive income thing. So um, tell people, just kind of give them a refresher course on why this is such a great business, how they can learn about it. I mean, you've got a course, you've got coaching, and... Um, how this can either be a full-time business or a part-time business. Okay, no problem. The thing that I love about the ATM business, first of all, is that you can start it as a full-time standalone business if you want. Or if you have a full-time job, if you have a part-time job, if you're going to school, if you already have a, like a side hustle, if you will, you can fit the ATM business so easily into all that, even if you have all that going on. Because one of the great things about it is it takes very little time. I mean, very little time. It's it's a pretty passive business, but of course you have to fill the machines, which is a good thing. It means people right. are using you know using the machine and you're getting paid. But it literally, Sharon, takes me one minute and ten point eight seconds to fill an ATM machine. Mm -hmm. Now, if you tell me that you can't find one minute and ten point eight seconds in your day or week mm -hmm. or or month. I'm going to call hogwash on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, one minute and 10.8 seconds that can provide you with passive income month in and month out for the rest of your life, it's definitely worth finding that one minute. So mm -hmm. that's the big thing I like. It's it's very small time commitment. Mm -hmm. Another thing is it doesn't really require a lot of money. Of course, there has to be cash in the actual ATM machine. Of course, you know, otherwise well, people can't get it out. Tell people, this is one thing I had a hard time grasping in the beginning. You put in an initial amount of cash, and it recycles the same cash over and over. They don't have to have this huge room of cash off somewhere and keep putting it in because you're recycling Correct. the same cash. Correct. I teach people to start with a small amount of money to put in their machine. Let's just say $1,500, not $15,000, 1500 And then you put it in, and let's just say, for instance, Sharon, you came and took out $200 from my machine. Well, what happens is it comes out of my machine, comes into your hand, but then in the back of, you know, all the back behind the scenes stuff, mm -hmm. the processor takes the money from your account, the $200 plus the surcharge, and deposits it back into my account. And then I take that back out of my account and put it back in the machine. So that $200 just did a complete cycle right back into my machine. Yeah. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, that, and I think that's a point where um, people need to understand. I think they just simply don't think that that's how it works. Yeah, and I, I honestly, when I first got started, I didn't understand it either. I'm like, well, wait a minute, where's the money coming yeah, from? Yeah, where's the money was, come from? Yeah, and when I thought about it, Kathy looked at me like, really? And then I thought about it, I'm like, oh, man, that was dumb. Yeah. But it's not. Like, you don't know when you're first yeah. you know, into the business, you know. You don't yeah. get it. But, yeah, it just constantly recycles itself. So, yeah, there has to be cash in there, but that doesn't mean it has to be cash from your bank account. So if you're sitting there and you have no money in your bank account right now, that's okay. You still can get started in the ATM business. Uh, I'm sure, you know, you got, you're in real estate investing, so a lot of you folks know about OPM, other people's money. 
doesn't matter if it's a private money lender, if it's a credit card, because if it's a credit card, that's still somebody else's money. That's not your money, right? Line of credit, it doesn't matter. So you can get started with the ATM business with little to none of your own money, and then this business is so cool that it could be scalable. You can start with one machine and then build it to 10, 20, 30, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So that's another cool thing about it. Mm -hmm. Now, in your course, you teach people from right from the beginning how to set up an ATM business. They can be small. They can be big. You know, they can, you teach them how to, um, everything from where you get your machines to partnering with somebody if they don't have a lot of money. But, um, I know when I went through the course, I would venture to say that anybody can do this business. Would you agree? Absolutely. Most certainly. Women, men, it doesn't matter. I know a lot of women will say, well, what about safety? Valid concern. Valid concern. But, me and Kathy are both women. I'm 5'6", she's 5'2", very little. We've been in the business over three years now. We follow common sense safety tips. Just follow, have common sense, and you'll be fine, you know. I do want to say I do have a license to carry. I don't, but I do have a license to carry, and I do take a self-defense class. And honestly, I don't care if you're in the ATM business or not. If you are a woman, I firmly believe every woman in this world should take a self-defense class. But yeah. safety, I, I don't think women should let safety stop them. But anybody can be in this business, young, old, woman, man, black, white, green. I don't care. You, you can be in this business. Now, for anyone that buys the, we're uh, thinking of buying the course and they're saying, well, what if I have questions? What if I need somebody to help me along? I know that you have a, a very affordable coaching program. You want to tell everybody about that? Sure. I mean, a lot of your questions, honestly, will be answered in the course. because That's why I put the course together, because I started in, in this business and had tons of questions. <laughs> so I thought, okay, what do these people need to know that want to start this business? So a lot of the questions are going to be in the course. Um, I do have a platinum partnership program that people can join if they want. It's $37 a month. It's one Q&A call a month. That's live, so we're on the phone, you know, you're asking me any questions you want about the course, about when you were meeting with a business owner and they gave you an objection and you didn't know what to do, um, anything you want. So it's one Q&A call a month. We have expert interviews, have special videos, special audios. Actually, I just recorded an audio of me going in talking to a business owner trying to let me place my ATM there. So that's getting ready to put up on the site. There's a lot of good stuff, and everything's recorded that you can hear. You know, if you can't make the live call, for instance, um, you can email me your question, and I'll still get to it on the live call, hopefully, if there's time. And then you just listen to the recordings. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of help available for you. Well, of I know. course, at some Go point in the future, I know some people, I'm sorry, uh, uh, some people want a little bit more than that. So I'm sure at some point in the future, I will offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. But right now, the, the Platinum Partnership Program seems to be working for a lot of folks. Okay. Okay. I know I've listened in on the calls, and uh, uh, they're great. You can. It's just like chatting with anybody on your calls, not anything real formal, so you really can ask anything. And I have the course, and I, I can tell you it's a great course. It's a great business if you have a full-time job, if you are – uh, have a some type of business now and you want a secondary business, it's probably one of the easiest ways to make passive income that I've ever come across. So it's uh, simple. And you, and you know what I tell, and you know I love real estate. I'll always be a real estate investor, always. But the thing about the ATM business, the passive income that you can get from these little ATM machines can equal or exceed the passive income that you can get from a real estate property. Yeah, from real I mean, that's house. huge. And then the cool thing is if you don't like, let's say you have an ATM machine and it's not performing the way you want it to perform. The cool thing about the ATM business is you pick that machine up and move it somewhere else. You can't do that with a house. No, no. It's a whole lot harder with a house. And with the ATM machines, you've got no tenants and no toilets. That That's huge. You got that right. That's huge. So. No. No tenants, no toilets, no downline, no SEO optimization, none of that. Cool. So, uh, well, I want to thank you, Carrie, for coming on again today, taking time out of your busy day. And um, I'm going to put the links to Carrie's site and uh, her course and all, all the things that you need to uh, go check it out. And um, 
Once again, thanks, Carrie, and we'll be back soon. Thanks for having me, Sharon, and have a great day. Thank you.